بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته اللهم اجعل جمعنا هذا جمعا مرحوما واجعل التفرق بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تدع فينا شقيا ولا محروما uh, The title of my talk is You get what you give اللي بتدفعه تحصله Let's just highlight and fix this simple important concept about our understanding in our relation with this universe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us and he gave us a lot of free things he gave us the aql for free <laughs> he gave us the ruh the existence for free <laughs> we are not paying for that <laughs> he gave us the power of understanding the will power he gave us the sights the hearing the power the imagination everything for free 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 however in the area of testing trial it's based on the concept of you get what you pay for <laughs> everything is for free initially speaking but once we started the trial the test al imtihan al bala al ibtila now you get what you pay for <laughs> it's exactly like walillahi al mathal al imagine yourself traveling in a long journey and you have a lot of needs in this six months or one year journey and you know that you need a lot of things a very powerful financial institution in our language now a bank came to you and gave you credit card <laughs> credit card unlimited <laughs> you can keep paying whatever you want to do however the owner of the credit card told you this manual don't use this credit card in this list please use it in this list friend places hotels food entertainment halal whatever use those with this credit card wherever you use you will earn more points <laughs> and you will be rewarded when you finish your journey if you use this list if you use we will give you a chance every time you use your credit card an alarming will come be careful this is against the agreement are you sure you want to carry on yes second time this is against the credit card <laughs> don't carry on are you sure yes okay face the consequences take six months now when you reach at the end accountability now Allah created us and gave us the divine credit card. Do you know what is the divine credit card? In my understanding, three things. Intention, attitude, action. When I'm told that we have three divine currencies. Niya, mawqif, action. What if I do, can't do the action? No problem. Allah will hold you accountable for your attitude and your intention. But what if even I can't show my attitude? Is it possible? Is it possible? Definitely possible, yes. Then the last that no one can escape without, which is the niya. Where did I derive this from? Anyone who saw an act of evil let him if he has the power to change it by his power but what if i can't i have no power i'm not a police person i'm not a politician i'm not a president i'm not a, I'm, I'm, I'm just simple okay for example say something this is wrong this is bad this is evil what if i can't is it possible that i can't even speak Especially in the Arab world. Is it possible in the Arab world that someone cannot speak? <laughs> Definitely, because when you speak, you die. <laughs> so the least, the intention. Now, my point, by the way, is terbiyah. 
This is the general idea. I, I laid the foundations of the accountability with the idea of you get what you pay for. So, therefore, my point still, I am building on the concept of قو أنفسكم وأهليكم نارا. In the area of accountability, I have Nia, intention, attitude, action. Every one of us would love his son to be half of the Quran. You need to know that part of the law, children are created by the Creator. They are built on the concept. In the first seven years, they just imitate. They just copy. They just take you as a role model. Don't waste your time in philosophy. You want them to love the Quran? Be the role <laughs> model. Read the Quran. Let them see you read the Quran. Very simple. Very simple logic. You want them to love? You must you yourself to pass the basic minimum requirement of loving the Quran. Basics. I'm not saying you have to be half of. But it's unacceptable in the law of Allah that I want my son to be Salah al-Din al in everything and I myself don't pray even. <laughs> it's against the law of Allah. It's against. It's called the wishful thinking. It's just, I'm wishing. But I have three divine currencies. Have I used three of them? If yes, after that, don't worry. Allah will not set you accountable. What is my delil? Nuh alayhi salam, Lut alayhi salam. He did, they did their best. His son and his wife, they did not listen. But he did his best. So, now, Imagine that I am someone as a father or a mother wasting my time four hours a day watching the latest, latest songs or episodes of Musalsalat, Arabic or English or Netflix, and I can't live without them. How can I convince my son and my daughter not to waste his time on the TV, for example, or the social media? The next step he will be maybe an addict on the porno sites because he is exposed to everything. And all filthy, dirty things, they are mixed together. I myself, I'm not able to control myself. How come? Hey, don't touch it, but I myself. Ta? Second, quick, quick examples. How many of, especially the Arabs, because I have a good, uh, I am from Jordan, I know the Arabs. 70 to 90% of Arab males, they smoke. And all of them, they wish their sons not to be smokers. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't accept. The first step, if you want your son not to smoke, please, you stop smoking. One of the amazing things that I have come across, that there is a survey. 99% of youth who are addicts on drugs, 99% in the age of 18 to 25, when they did the survey on worldwide with thousands of youth who are classified as addicts on drugs, they discovered that their first step to drugs was a cigarette. The normal cigarettes, which is just smoking. Smoking, weed, smoking, hookah or shisha, then cocaine or heroin or whatever the alam. And many cases, the father is the one or the uncle or the is they are smoking. So, and we can keep bringing all of these examples. Imagine, I would love my son or my daughter to be the best in manners and to be calm, respectful for everyone. But when I have a dispute with my wife at home, our screaming and shouting can be heard from next, next, next neighbors. So what is the role model? So we can keep talking about how we spend our money, our attitudes. Do I say the truth when I'm speaking in the telephone? My son, my daughter looking at me, hey, what are you doing now? Oh, you know, I'm busy, I'm, uh, I'm washing the dishes. But I'm not washing the dishes. <laughs> She's looking at me as a mother now. I'm not washing the dishes. Simply, you have the right to say I'm busy in something and don't say what is it, but don't lie. <laughs> the message, lie is, okay, no problem. Lying is, okay. How many times some parents, they do such a things? And we can keep 
highlighting tens of examples. What is the title? You get what you pay for. If you want, inshallah, your son, your daughter to be Umar al-Khattab, or Abu Bakr, or Salah al-Din, or Muhammad al-Fatih, you have to pay. <laughs> you must pay a lot. When you do your best, after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take with the rest. And I finish. What is the evidence? What is the delay for what I'm saying? وَكَانَ أَبُوهُمَا صَالِحًا Imagine someone who passed away, no one knows who is he. He just, you know, he's not a prophet. We don't know who is he. This Salih. Allah sent two prophets, Musa alayhi salam and Al-Khadr. They worked as builders with mud, with soil, with stones to protect the wall which contains the treasure underneath it. وَأَمَّا الْجِدَارُ فَكَانَ لِوَلَدَيْنِ فَكَانَ لِغُلَامَيْنِ في المدينة وكان أبوهما صالحا. We don't know who's the father. He was a righteous person to a degree that Allah, Allah is protecting his two young sons after he passed away. And it's not just that he sent two prophets to work as builders to protect their will for the future. This happened in the right for them. They know nothing. They know nothing about what happened. Allah is taking care as a reward for their father who was Salih. So when you be a Salih person, doing your best, it's not just the direct, it's the indirect by the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's inshallah take an oath, you know, against ourselves, a covenant between us and Allah, not to leave the masjid, not to leave Ramadan without taking a decision. Ya Allah, help me in one, two, three, don't ask anyone to change before you take a decision you to change. When you take a decision, you will have the power to ask others. Actually, you will not need to ask them because they will <laughs> follow you. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and yahfadha awladakum awladana, wa yaghfiradana, wa yarhamana, zakum Allah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.